Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the access control list, which helps us to apply fine-grained permissions on files and directories. And to manage the ACL, we will learn two commands, get FACL and set FACL. For most situations, the standard Linux permissions are satisfactory, but they have certain limitations. These permissions are limited only to the file owner, the group owner, and then for everyone else. Now, under certain situations, you might want to give certain permissions to someone who is not the user owner of that particular file, means the one who is not owning that file. Or you might want to grant another group certain different permissions, which are not the permissions for the group owner and even for others. Now let us take an example to understand this. Let us suppose that there is a file data.txt. The user owner of this file is Baljeet who is having read, write and execute permission. The group owner of this file is Linux who is having read and write permission. All others are having only the read permissions. Now my question is, can you grant the user Ricky read, write permissions? Can you grant another group guest read and execute permissions? This is not possible to grant permissions to a specific user or a specific group other than the user owner or the group owner using the chmod command. This is where the role of access control list comes into play and we use the command set FACL to give special permissions to special people or special group. The permission flags that we can use with ACL are read, write, execute, minus means no permission and there is a special flag capital X. Capital X gives selective execute permission to the directory content that is the subdirectories will get the execute permission whereas the regular files within a directory will not get execute permissions until and unless they already have execute permission. But if you use small x then execute permission will be given to directories as well as files which is not the right way to do it because regular files should not have execute permission. Next is how to view ACL. So you can use the ls-l command and if you see a plus sign at the end of the permissions this means that ACL is set on that. Whatever permission you see for the user are actually the user permissions, the user owner permissions but whatever permissions you see under the group are not for the group owner. They are actually the mask. So this I'm going to cover later on. Just remember if the ACL is set then the permissions that you view under the group are not the group owner permissions but they are the mask set for the group. The permission under the others are the standard other permissions. So the right command to view the ACL is get FACL. So you write get FACL and then the file name. And let us take an example. So if I use the ls-l command, you can see a list of files here. And wherever you see plus, this means that the ACL is set on that particular file or directory. Now, if I view the long list of the directory job, you can see that the plus sign is there, which means that the ACL is set on the directory job. The use of ls-l does not give us any kind of detail. To view the detailed ACL, we need to use the get FACL command. Now the details are the file name is job, the file owner is Lisa, the group owner is root, the permissions for file owner are read, write and execute, the permissions for the group owner are read and execute and similarly the permissions for others are also read and execute. The default permissions are also mentioned here. Default permissions mean that whenever we will create new files and subdirectories within the job directory the user is going to get read write x, the group is going to get read write and others are going to get read and execute permissions. So you can see that the default group permissions are different from the current group permissions. This is because 
I have changed the settings accordingly. Now another example is if I view the long list for the file named file, you can see ACL is set. If I use getfacl command, it shows the full detail. In this case, the named user student has read write and execute permissions whereas the user owner has only read write permission. So we can use ACL to give the named user or a named group certain specific permissions. Next we are going to learn how to assign these fine grained permissions to named users and named groups. The command used to set ACL is set FACL. We will use the minus M option if we want to add or modify the existing ACL permissions. For example, set FACL minus M, then you use U for user or G for group, followed by the name of the user or group, and then followed by the permissions, and finally the name of the file or the directory. Now, let us take an example. So you can see no ACL is set on the file practice. There is no plus sign in the long list. The user owner is Rohit and the group owner is Linux. The user owner Rohit has read write permission whereas the group owner Linux has only read permission. Which means members of the Linux group can only read the contents of the file practice. Now let us check who are the members of the Linux group. So you can see that the Linux group has three members, Rohit, Virat and Saurabh. One of the member that is Rohit is the owner of the practice file. Now I am going to log in with Virat user. Since Virat is the member of the Linux group, this means Virat can read the contents of the file practice. So you see Virat is able to view the contents of the file using the cat command. But if I try to write into the file, it will show an error because write is not allowed to members of the Linux group. Now the user Virat has misbehaved and as an admin, we want that the Virat user should not be allowed any access to the practice file. But at the same time, you do not want to remove Virat from the Linux group. Now how this can be done? For this, we will use the setfacl command to restrict permissions only for Virat while not affecting any members of the Linux group. So the command will be setfacl minus m u colon virat colon since we do not want any permissions so no permission and then the file name so this will deny virat any access to practice file but will not affect any other member of the linux group now we can verify this using the get fsel command also so you see that user virat has got no permission on the file let's verify this by checking the account of each user of the linux group now i will go back to virat user login who am i virat now if virat tries to read the contents of the file practice he will get permission denied error whereas if i log in with saurabh who is also the member of the linux group saurabh will be able to read the contents of the practice file there you go this is because we have only put restriction on the virat user and not on any member of the Linux group. We can also grant certain specific permissions to named groups also. Now let's grant special permissions to a named group. This is a group project 1 whose members are Ram and Sham. As of now they are part of others and have only read permission on the file practice. So if I log in with user Ram and I try to read the contents, you can see that he can read the contents of the file but he cannot modify the contents because write permission is not there. Same holds true for the other member of the group 
that is sham next we will change permissions for project 1 group the command is set fsel minus m and then g colon name of the group that is project 1 the new permissions so read and write so i am going to add the write permission now if i log in with user sham and try to write into the file practice you will see he is able to write into the file because we have allowed write permission for group project 1 the same also holds true for the other group member of the project 1 group that is ram we can also check this using the get fsel output the group project 1 has got the read write permission in the next part of acl we will cover recursive acl deleting acl and setting default acl permissions